Hello friends, welcome to my channel. In this video we'll be exploring the autosomal DNA results of a Baltic hunter-gatherer from, uh, from Latvia actually. So, um, this individual has mitochondrial lineage U4 and his Y DNA is I2, very typical Y DNA for all European hunter-gatherers. Uh, this person lived, let's find out the time period, hold on. The time period is 53 centuries before the Common Era, so definitely a very long time ago. This is the Mesolithic period in Europe. Uh, these people were, I, I think he might even belong to the Narva culture, but maybe not. Maybe not Narva because he's a little bit too southern. You can see the location here is quite southern, quite far from Narva. Um, in terms of the GD match results, let me show you his results with Eurogenes K13. Hold on. So with Eurogenes K13, he is scoring 57% Baltic, 38% North Atlantic. Uh, definitely very European hunter-gatherer result, and he's quite um, he's quite Western. So if I had to estimate his ancestry, uh, I would say his ancestry is probably around uh, two thirds Western hunter-gatherer and one third Eastern hunter-gatherer in terms of admixture. He's definitely quite Western. Uh, he doesn't score that much Amerindian or Oceanian. He doesn't really score any of the Eastern hunter-gatherer components. He's, as I've said previously. Definitely very Western. So we're going to look at the National Code Calculator results and we're going to see what he looks like right now. What does this person look like? So he looks quite interesting. There is uh, very few people in Latvia who look like this or like this. Uh, maybe a little bit more who look like this, but still uh, definitely a lot darker than modern Latvians. And I noticed that various European hunter-gatherers tend to score these, uh, these phenotypes more. Uh, it's, it seems to be that these two phenotypes are very European hunter-gatherer, uh, typical for European hunter-gatherers. Uh, with the model, he seems to be getting modeled as a mixture of this um, green-eyed uh, stranded plus Mediterranean or green-eyed stranded plus dark-eyed stranded. Uh, this is the closest model to him, keep in mind. And when it comes to his eye color, it's quite interesting. He's, he's quite dark. Um, definitely goes against the stereotype that uh, these Baltic hunter-gatherers were all very light because look at him. He's scoring hazel eyes. Uh, hazel or brown eyes is what he scores for the most part. There is a slight chance of green eyes or blue eyes with a neighbor center or darkest brown. But the biggest chance is hazel or brown, which is quite dark uh, for European standards. His hair color is black. There is a 20% chance of dark brown hair, but most likely his hair color is black. And he's got light brown skin, so he's definitely very dark. Uh, he's got straight hair or wavy, straight or wavy hair, but it looks like he's got heterozygous genotype in both BEH2 and BEH3 and also BEH4. Uh, when it comes to blue eye haplotype 1, uh, it looks like there's definitely this linkage here. He's got this variation in BEH1, which uh, has where he has zero light color variants, and then there is this variation where he's got two light color variants. So uh, when it comes to blue eye haplotype 1, let's just put it uh, undetermined. But he is heterozygous for BH2, 3, and 4, which is quite interesting. Uh, as, I, as I will say, as I said previously, and I will say it again, I will say it again, European hunter-gatherers tend to not have blue eye haplotype 4, and they tend to all have BH2 and 3. So once again, it's definitely um, an outlier result, because he's not very typical. This, this kind of a genotype in HERC2 is not very typical for a European hunter-gatherer. And this type of pigmentation is actually also not very typical for a Baltic hunter-gatherer. This is definitely a lot darker than what's uh, most common for this group of people. Phenotype Oracle. Let's click on that. So it looks like for the Phenotype Oracle, 8.3% uh, this, plus 8.3% this, plus 16.16% this, plus 41% this, plus 16% this, plus 8% this. The largest group here is this. But if you merge all of them together, you're going to end up with a phenotype that's closer to him. Um, if, um, if I had a way to sort of merge all of these pictures together into one, it would be really cool. But I don't really know how to do that. All right. Uh, when it comes to the ethnic calculator results, let's, look, let's click on that, actually. It's maybe quite interesting. He is closest to French and Bailulilai from Lithuania. These are simply the most northern shifted um, groups in, and western hunter-gatherer shifted groups in my oracle. That's why he is scoring them. Uh, followed by Kievan Rus and Finnish and North Germanic, very, various northern European groups, basically. Um, a very interesting, very interesting result. And now we're going to look at the biomarkers panel. 
and for the biomarkers panel it looks like he's got a below average odds for below below average levels of vitamin d which is kind of unfortunate uh, he's got slightly above average levels of ldl cholesterol which is definitely not good but he's still sort of in the healthy range he's got a below average levels of hdl cholesterol which is also definitely not good but he's still in the very much in the healthy range he's got a below average level of glucose which is really good uh, he's got average levels of hemoglobin which is quite good and blood pressure slightly higher than average but still in the healthy range iron pretty much spot on average so once again really healthy uh, he's quite healthy it looks like what about the polygenic risk scores let's see that does he have any uh, alarming scores for the polygenic risk scores it looks like he's got a high score for atrial fibrillation all right that's unfortunate he's got a below average score for deep vein thrombosis he's got a high score for bipolar type 1 and he's got a high score for schizophrenia and he's got a quite high score for type 2 diabetes and he's also got a high score for alzheimer's and he's also got a relatively high score for multiple sclerosis so there is definitely quite a lot to watch out for when it comes to especially schizophrenia and bipolar type 1 but then again um then again a high score for these kinds of illnesses is not that alarming because they are just so so uncommon um i mean it's like 0.04 percent or something of people who have these illnesses so definitely there's not much to be concerned about here um it looks like he's got five risk variants for breast cancer out of 12 which is quite concerning but then again keep in mind it's not a very high quality file you don't know what kind of variants these 12 are are they important variants are they unimportant we don't know because it's not a very high quality file uh free risk variants for testicular cancer out of 12 which is really really good actually really really good to see um one risk variant for celiac disease out of 10 which is quite good as well nothing relevant was found for gerstmann schauster schenker syndrome so definitely really good uh well not not that it's good it's just that there's not much data and free risk variants for Crohn's out of 18, which is quite typical, quite good. Reifenstein's, nothing was found. And he's got two risk variants for Parkinson's out of 24. All right. Uh, once again, quite typical, quite typical result. And uh, I normally, uh, I from this point on, I will not really be talking about all of this, all of these monogenic traits. Should I talk about them? Yeah, I probably should. But uh, I realized that most people don't really watch my stuff and uh, most people don't watch this part of the video where i discuss all of this stuff so i'm not going to talk about it i am going to talk about the blood type because the blood type is very interesting he's actually one of the few samples that are predicted to have blood type b um, type b blood type is uncommon and him scoring 72 percent likelihood of blood type b is definitely um it, it's definitely interesting to see uh well thanks for watching the video until the very end leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it and you know, recommend it to your friends. Once again, I will remind you, you can download this file uh, in 23andMe format from link, which is in the description of the video. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.